as the dawning of the day moves us from darkness to light, so will the entrance of God's Word lighten up your life. Stay tuned for the teaching ministry of Charlotte Falver as she presents this light with Bringing to Light Ministries. Today is your day for victory in Jesus. Good day to you. I'm glad that you have tuned in to the Bring Into Light program. It's such a joy to be with you today. And we trust that the Word of God will be a special blessing to you. We want to get into a new, maybe a mini series. But I have entitled this The Power of Praise and Worship. There is a lot to be said about that subject, but there's just a few things that I want to focus on that I believe will be an encouragement to you. Maybe you've heard a lot of positive things said in this area and maybe some negative, but I'm believing that as we look at the Word of God, you'll see for yourself what God says about praise and worship and how it is a power source for the child of God's life. So I trust that you will be tuning in not only the rest of the program today, but in the next few weeks as we approach this subject of power, the power of praise and worship. Before we get into uh, our word today and what I believe God has laid up on my heart, I do want to say thank you for your prayers for bringing to light ministries and as you stand with us with your financial gifts. What a blessing that you would choose to sow into this ministry. I decree and declare that we are good ground because we are ministry from God's holy word. And I am so grateful to my father for the opportunity to be here before you today. And what a joy that you would join with me and be partnering with this ministry to declare who our God is to those who will hear. It is my privilege also as you write to us to pray over each request that comes in. No matter what that is, I, it goes through my hands. And it's not just a stack of stuff that I pray over, but I do call your name out before the Lord. Uh, it's something I desire to do and I want to do. I know we have the joy of meeting even in our church every Tuesday morning. We meet there at 630 and uh, I'm taking your letters with me. Sometimes I'll spread them over the chairs there that's in the sanctuary and I will pray over each one of those and I take my prayer cloths and I pray over you and believe that the anointing of God is flowing into those cloths according to what we see in the book of Acts when those aprons was taken from Paul's body because the anointing was in that cloth to bring healing and deliverance to those who needed it. So it is my joy and my privilege of praying over you or those that you are requesting prayer for. So please take that time to send in your request and allow me the opportunity to pray with you. Will you join me within prayer right now? Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you again, Lord, for the privilege of being here, Lord, declaring your word. Father God, I don't take for granted today, Lord, the freedom that I have to stand here and to proclaim who you are. Father God, there's so many nations, Lord, if they stood as I am and declared from your Bible, Lord God, they would be persecuted, imprisoned, and possibly killed. God, thank you for the liberty that I have in America to open your Bible and to preach from it, Father. God, we say thank you. Lord, use me now to speak into the lives of those who've tuned in today. And Father, give them ears to hear what you would say. And to you, my Lord, be all of the praise and the glory. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. The power of praise and worship. You know, sometimes when we think about praising or worshiping, we think, well, we have a worship service and it starts at so-and-so o'clock on Sunday morning. Well, that's good, but I'm wondering how many people are going and they're singing songs, whether it's out of a hymn book or from an overhead, but they've never truly praised nor have they worshiped. The Bible's very clear that we are to worship in spirit and in truth. In other words, we are to be worshipers by the Holy Spirit and the truth being from God's holy word. You see, many are going again and they're singing songs and that's good and we enjoy that. But worship must come from the heart. 
It's not just having the intellect that God is mighty and He is good, but that I personally want to join with others and lift up praise and worship to my Father God who is worthy of the worship and praise. We see in Scripture that let everything that hath breath praise the Lord. Well, I'm breathing today, so I am to praise and I'm to worship. I like the scripture that it says that if we don't cry out the praises unto God, then the rocks will cry out and worship Him. I love the scripture that talks about the trees clapping their hands as a praise and worship unto the Lord. Everything we see in the earth today in all creation, God created it. And it was created in a way that we could enjoy it, but yet it too is giving praise and worship to the Almighty God. I believe even the birds that sing is a song of praise and worship to the King of kings and the Lord of lords. You know, no matter what you are going through today, what you're experiencing, God is still worthy of your worship and praise. Even if you don't feel like praising and worshiping today, he still is worthy of your praise and of your worship. You know, your children may come into the kitchen and you may be cooking that special meal that, that's their favorite. And they begin to smell the aroma coming from that stove and they know exactly what you've done. You have fixed a special meal for them. And you know, they, they may have come in and they may be tired from school or maybe they've been busy and they're doing their homework, but they come into the kitchen and they begin to say, oh, I know what you've done. I smell that special meal that you've made for me. Thank you, Mommy. Thank you for cooking that for me. And they may give you a big old hug and, and just say once again, thank you. Well, you know what that does to your heart. You know what it does to you when a child will encourage you with words or that hug or that big smile, even if it's a baby, and that baby sees you and it just lights up. There's nothing like it, is there? Well, I want you to know that you may be one of millions uh, that you call yourself a Christian, a child of God. But I want you to know your voice is special and you are special to the Almighty God. And when you come before Him and you begin to lift up your voice of praise and worship unto Him, I want you to know you bring great joy to your Heavenly Father. I know how it is with my children when they used to come in once again to see me and they might put their arms around my legs and look up to me and say, Mommy, you're the best mommy in all the world. And I'd think, wow, what do you want? You just tell me anything I can get. I want to get it for you. Because it would bring such joy to my heart. And I don't know why we think the heart of our Father is any different. But I want you to know He may have all of His children praising and worshiping. But if we, to say you today, are not in that time of praise and worship from the heart, you may be singing songs and you're singing them from your mind because you've memorized the words. You know, it's almost like he leans down and he begins to ask, where are you? I need you today. I want you to come and praise and worship me. God is worthy of your praise and of your worship. And I want you to know there are many things that happen when we begin to choose to praise and worship our God. There are many ways that we can praise and worship. Most of us are familiar with lifting up our hands and praising and worshiping the Lord. And you may say, well, we don't do that in our church. Well, I remember we didn't do that in our church either. But I see in the Word of God that we are to lift up holy hands without wrath and without doubting. And I began to see there were those in the Word that would lift their arms, their hands up to God and begin to praise and to worship Him. I remember when I was in a particular denominational church and we were asked by the leadership to lift up our hands in praise and worship during the next song that we were going to sing. And that was very difficult for me and because I thought, I'm not worthy to do that. I can't do that. And I refused to raise my hands unto the Lord. Well, you can say, well, what was wrong with you? Well, a lot of it was just what we call ignorance. It was just ignorance to the Word of God. I felt like I had to be on a certain status with God before I could truly praise and worship Him in that manner. But you see, the truth is, I am born of God. I've not arrived yet, but His blood has washed me and cleansed me from all unrighteousness. And I choose to live for Him and serve Him. But because I felt unworthy to raise my hands, I wouldn't raise my hands. That may be with you today. But do you not know that God has made you worthy through His Son, Jesus Christ? It's not by your goodness, but it's by His grace, His ability. 
that he chose to make you worthy when Jesus becomes the Lord of your life and you choose to follow after the Lord. I want to bring joy to the heart of my Father and I want to lift up holy hands unto him. Now it's no problem. I can hardly keep my hands down because I want to lift up my hands in praise and worship unto him. With that in mind, I was thinking as I was looking over these, this message for you in Hebrews chapter 6 and verse 12, the scripture says, through faith and patience, we inherit the promises. Now, I want you to notice here that it's through faith and patience. We've studied through our broadcast a lot about faith. Hebrews 11 verse 1, now faith is the substance, the assurance, the confidence, the knowing that you know. It's the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. We begin to think about the promises in God's Word and we begin to say, Now, Lord, this is what your Word says. And we begin to make our petitions known. We ask the Father based on the Word. Well, we're basing it on the promise of God. God said these promises will come to us. Yes, we inherit them through faith and patience. So when I ask, according to Mark uh, chapter 11, 22, 23, and 24, those verses through there, I must believe that I receive the promise of God. That's what faith is all about, that I believe I have it before I can see it, touch it, or embrace it. But I receive it again by faith. That's the way the new birth is, is it not? You that call yourself born again, didn't you, according to Romans chapter 10, call upon the name of the Lord? You believed that you received Him as your Savior. You believed He came into your heart. You might have spoken to somebody and said, I was born again. Did I ask Jesus to come into my heart? Well, somebody that's not sure about that, they might say, well, did you see God? Did you see Jesus? Have you been to heaven? Well, no, I haven't seen any of those things, but I believe it because the Bible tells me so. Well, that's faith, and that's how we receive, yes, the new birth. But how about this patience? There's some things that we have to remain single-minded, and that's what patience means. When I ask based on the authority of God's Word, I am have to be single-minded upon that. And when I'm doing this, I think one of the main things that we need to know, and so many Christians are not doing this, in the process of standing, as the scripture says in Ephesians, and after having done all to stand, to stand therefore, holding fast to what God's word says, I need to be a praiser to God for what I'm believing Him to do. You mean, Charlotte, I could praise Him and worship Him even before I see the answers to my prayer? Most assuredly. And we're going to see in our teaching that this is exactly what happened with Abram, whom we know now as Abraham. As he began to hold fast to the promise of God, there was something that he was doing every day, and that was praising the Father God that he, yes, Abraham, was a father of many nations. Here he is almost a hundred years old, and yet he's telling everybody, I'm a father of many nations. Even though he's past the age of having children, and so is his wife, Sarah, or Sarah, we know that she was an older woman. Here she is in her 90s, and God is saying, you're going to have a child. Well, he held fast to the promises of God by giving praise unto the Lord. And I want you to know this is what we must do. As we begin to say, Lord, this is what your word says, I'm asking you on the authority of this, and I believe I receive. Let me give you a, an example, something that I'm believing God for. There's somebody in my family that I'm holding fast to for God. I'm seeing things that are demonstrated in that life that grieves my heart as, as a, one who is very, very uh, close to this person, and yet I'm crying out to God and making my petitions known. And I'm basing a lot of my believing upon, Father, you said that me and my household would be saved. You said, Lord, those that are in the land of the enemy, Father, they're coming into their own borders. You said that my family, Lord, would be blessed. And I'm holding fast to you, Father. And then God, at your word, said that it's not your will that any would perish, but all would come to repentance. Are you hearing the promises? I'm simply speaking what God's word says. I ask the Father, and I believe I receive. But then I begin to think about the scripture in 1 John in chapter 5 and it begins to talk about the petitions. It said if you would ask on the authority of his will and you know what his will is, anything that you would ask on the authority of God's word which is his will that you would have the petitions that you desire of the Lord. 
And so based upon knowing what God's will was for this family member, I began to say, Lord, this is what you said. And Father God, I have made my petition known before you, Lord, and I, I believe I receive it today. Father God, I know that I have this promise, Lord God, because I've asked you and you said, Lord, that the petition, Lord, that I desired, that you would give it to me. So Lord, I give you thanks and praise for this. I give you glory, Lord, and I give you honor. And I want you to know that every day I'm thanking God for what he's doing in this life. I thank the Lord that he's sending forth laborers across that path. I am thanking God for his promises and that he is bringing to pass the desire of my heart. Yes, based upon God's word. But so many times we're just caught up. I'm a hoping and a praying, hoping and a praying. I'm glad that Abraham didn't do that. With this in mind, we're going to look at Genesis in chapter 17 and verse 1. And when Abram was 90 years old and nine, 99, the scripture says, The Lord appeared to Abram and said unto him, I am the Almighty God. Walk before me and be thou perfect or mature. And I will make my covenant between me and thee and will multiply thee exceedingly. Now, we know the covenant. Uh, uh, many in this day would have known exactly what a covenant was. But I want you to know that when a covenant was made, no matter what happened, you would keep your word. And God has given us a covenant. We call it the Old Covenant, the New Covenant, or the Old Testament, the New Testament, which is the Bible. And God has made covenant with us through His Word. But we have to get in agreement with the covenant, and we have to do our part. So I am teaching you today that part of walking in the covenant, yes, is asking, believe that you'll receive, and begin to give God thanks and praise and stay single-minded on what God's Word says, not on the circumstances or the roars from the enemy that would try to distract you from what God's Word says. So he began to say, I'm making covenant between me and you. Now verse 3, And Abraham fell on his face, and God talked with him, saying, As for me, behold, my covenant is with thee, and thou shalt be a father of many nations. Neither shall thy name any more be called Abram, but thy name shall be Abraham. For a father of many nations have I made thee. So we see that the word Abraham means father of many nations or a father of a multitude. And surely that's what Abram and Abraham became. Now if you can imagine with me, here is the promise to Abraham that he's going to be a father of multitude. He's 99 years old. He, again, he is beyond and his wife beyond the age of bearing children. But yet this is the promise from God that he is going to have multitudes that's going to born through, be born through his generations following him. And that's exactly what happens as you begin to study about Abraham and, and then the children of Israel that went on and on and on. We begin to see that there was multiplied thousands. The Bible even talks about the multitude as the stars of the heavens and as the sands of the sea. And I do believe that that has to do with not only those that would be born in physical births, but those that would be born into the family of God and even from the lineage of Abraham, that Jesus was born in that lineage, which would be multitudes that would be born into the family of God. I think that's what it has to do when it says the stars. So we see here that Abraham went out and he didn't just change his name to Abraham when he was in prayer, but he went out and called himself Abraham. He called himself a father of many nations. Now, I do not know the ridicule that he went through over doing such a thing, but he called things that be not as though they were because the son had not been born to him as of yet, but yet he began to declare, that's who I am. We're going to see another truth right in line with these passages when you turn back into the New Testament to Romans in chapter 4. If you have your Bibles, please turn with us. But in Romans in chapter 4, and we're going to begin reading here in verse 16. It says, Therefore it is of faith that it might be by grace. To the end, the promise might be sure to all, 
the seed, not to that only which is of the law, but to that also which is of the faith of Abraham, who is the father of us all, as it is written, I have made thee a father of many nations. Before him whom he believed, even God, who quickeneth the dead, and calleth these things which be not as though they were. Now again, this is something that Abraham chose to do. He called himself a father of many nations. God is calling us to do these kinds of things. I'm not talking about being a father of many nations, but I'm talking about taking the promises of God's word like I did for this individual in my family. You see, I began to speak the promises of God, and I am calling those things done in Jesus' name. What am I doing? My faith is declaring that I am going to call things even though they may not look that way, but I'm calling them as I desire it. I am calling it in line with the Word of God. In other words, I call this person not only born again, but filled with the Spirit of God and living for God. We need to turn our speaking around and speak what we are desiring. The Bible says that the tongue, it speaks life and it speaks death. What are you speaking today? I encourage you to speak life, speak that that is the Word of God. As Abraham chose to believe God, the Bible said that it, it gave life to that that was dead. Yes, he was dead and that he could not have children at that age and neither could Sarah, but God turned that around and He quickened them to where that the covenant that God had spoken to him would Come to pass. Now verse 18. Who against hope believed in hope that he might become the father of many nations according to that which was spoken, so shall thy seed be. Now notice again. Who against hope believed in hope? It looked like a hopeless situation for Abraham. And Sarah, how in the world could they have a child? It looked hopeless, especially as they begin to age more and more. Your situation may seem hopeless. But I want you to know that's the time you need to hold fast to God's promises and keep on speaking them. And I want you to know that just as Abraham received the promise, we can receive the promise too. Verse 19, And being not weak in faith, he considered not his own body, now dead, when he was about a hundred years old, neither yet the deadness of Sarah's womb. In other words, Abraham did not consider the circumstances. He held fast to God's word. How many times do we fail in receiving what God has promised because we are moved by the circumstances, we begin to doubt, and we don't believe what God has promised. Verse 20, He staggered not at the promises of God through unbelief, but was strong in faith, giving glory to God. Now this is the very part I wanted you to see. The Amplified Bible for that verse actually says, He was empowered by faith as He gave praise and glory. He was empowered by faith as He gave praise and glory. I'm sure that there were times that Abraham felt weak in his faith. There may have been times he think, you know, I'm not calling myself Abraham anymore. I'm too ashamed. Here I am getting older and older. But do you know he refused to give up? Every day he, be, he would remind himself of what God had spoken to him, that Abraham, you are going to be a father of many nations, and Sarah is going to be the mother of this child. So the scripture here is very clear that he was empowered. In other words, his faith would grow as he continued to give God praise and worship. Would you dare to praise and worship the Lord for the things that you've been believing God for? Or are you one that says, well, I sure hope He comes through for me. You know, we're just a hoping and a praying that maybe someday in the sweet by and by. Well, you know, that's not a person that's going to receive much from the Lord because faith is not in the sweet by and by in the sense that my faith is out there. But again, in Hebrews 11 verse 1, it says, N-O-W, now faith is. Not faith is going to be. Now, when that time comes, it will be then. But we have to look at as faith is a confidence now in the promises of God. And that's what Abraham did daily. He was saying, Lord, I praise you that I'm a father of many nations. Thank you, Lord God, for the multitude that's going to be born from our offspring, Sarah and my offspring. Thank you, Father. I give you praise. And I want you to know as it empowered him, it will empower you and me.
and being fully persuaded that what he had promised, he was able also to perform. And therefore, it was imputed to him for righteousness. I want you to know that God is well able to perform for you and me his promises. Sometimes I get weary, just like you do. But the Bible instructs us, don't become weary in well-doing. So when I feel that and I begin to sense that, I better reach out and cleave a little bit stronger to God's Word. Personally, I will go on a fast. When I feel myself becoming weary, I feel that I'm losing my rest in that I, I'm becoming maybe worried or anxious about something, then that's the time I'm going to fast. And why do I do that? And what is fasting? Fasting is to say I'm going to not eat for this many hours or this many days. It allows my spirit man to rise. It causes me to be more sensitive to spiritual things when I will go on a fast. I claim the promises of Isaiah 58 and it causes me again for my faith to arise, to become again more sensitive to God's Word and what He has said and that I begin to praise Him once again that I have asked and I believe I receive it and I give God the praise and the glory for what He has and what He is doing in Jesus' name. I hope that you've enjoyed this teaching today. It's a very interesting uh, story when we begin to read about Abraham and Sarah and what God did do in their lives. You know, you may not have scripture in verse for you for something you believe God has spoken to your life. In other words, you may not know where it is or you may be saying, well, God's called me to do this ministry. Well, I want you to know when God calls you, He will equip you. I think sometime we want it to happen right now. But begin to say, Lord, I thank you and I praise you, Father, for bringing it to pass in your timing and in your way. Well, I hope again this message has been a blessing. We'd love to hear from you. Please take some time and write to us. Don't forget to send those prayer requests. If you or someone you know that needs a healing in their bodies, let us know that. I will write their name on that prayer handkerchief and I will believe God with you. Well, our time is coming gone and the Lord's will will be back next time. Until then, may God bless you and I love you. I love you all.